On November 14, 2023, Voyager 1 abruptly fell silent, transmitting nothing but a meaningless stream of binary data. It seemed as though the legendary spacecraft, which had ventured beyond the solar system, was lost forever. The culprit was a memory failure in its onboard flight data system, FDS, threatening permanent communication loss. However, the dedicated team of scientists refused to accept defeat. They took a bold step, reallocating code to different sections of the probe's memory. This high-stakes operation began on April 18, 2024 with each signal taking 22.5 hours to reach Voyager 1 and the same amount of time for a response. Every attempt felt like a leap into the unknown. Then, just two days later, after months of relentless effort and anticipation, the impossible happened. Voyager 1 re-established contact. But what astonishing discoveries did the Voyagers make at the edge of the solar system? Why was it so different from what scientists had predicted? and what secrets lay within the mysterious signal Voyager once sent after months of eerie silence. In the late 1970s, a rare cosmic event unfolded, a planetary alignment that occurs only once every 175 years. The gas giants aligned on one side of the solar system, creating a unique opportunity for a single mission to explore them all. NASA seized this moment, launching Voyager once shortly after its twin, Voyager 2. Thanks to a faster trajectory, Voyager 1 overtook its counterpart, speeding through space at 38,000 miles per hour compared to Voyager 2's 34,360 miles per hour. Just 13 days after launch, Voyager 1 captured a historic image of Earth and the Moon from 7.2 million miles away, symbolizing the start of an unprecedented journey. By 1979, both probes had reached Jupiter, uncovering its faint rings, discovering three new moons, and capturing stunning images of its largest satellites. They confirmed that Ganymede, not Titan, was the solar system's largest moon and revealed Europa's smooth, cracked ice surface, sparking theories of a hidden subsurface ocean. Scientists also got their first up-close look at Jupiter's great red spot, a massive storm larger than Earth. But Jupiter was only the first stop. Using the gas giant's gravity as a slingshot, both probes accelerated toward their next destination, Saturn. Arriving in 1980 and 1981, Voyager 1 and 2 transformed our understanding of Saturn. Initially, the mission was only planned to study Jupiter and Saturn over four years, but NASA designed the trajectories with the possibility of extending the journey. A crucial decision was made. Voyager 1 would conduct a close flyby of Titan, the only moon with a dense atmosphere, even though this meant sacrificing its ability to continue exploring other planets. Meanwhile, Voyager 2 pressed on toward Uranus and Neptune. The probe sent back breathtaking images of Saturn and its intricate ring system, which was revealed to consist of hundreds of tightly packed bands. They also discovered four new moons, including Mimas, which, with its massive Herschel crater, eerily resembled the Death Star from Star Wars. Titan, however, remained a mystery. Its thick atmosphere was impenetrable to visible light, but data suggested a temperature near the triple point of methane, a condition where methane could behave like water does on Earth. After Saturn, the twins parted ways forever. Saturn's gravity propelled Voyager 1 onto a high-speed trajectory, making it the fastest spacecraft in history, while Voyager 2 continued its planetary odyssey. In January 1986, it reached Uranus, coming within 50,600 miles of its icy surface. Unlike Jupiter and Saturn, which are mostly hydrogen and helium, Uranus was found to have only a thin outer layer of these gases. Beneath it lay an ocean of water, ammonia, methane, and hydrogen sulfide, surrounding a dense core of rock and ice. This distinct composition led scientists to classify Uranus and Neptune as a new type of planet, asterisk ice giant star. Surprisingly, Uranus was also the coldest planet in the solar system, even colder than Neptune. Voyager 2's final stop was Neptune, the most distant planet, which it reached in August 1989. To this day, it remains the only spacecraft to have visited Neptune. On August 25, 1989, it captured the first ever detailed images of the planet, completing its grand tour.
Neptune appeared strikingly blue, though later analysis revealed its true color was closer to teal. While Voyager 2 explored Uranus and Neptune, Voyager 1 had already begun a different journey. With much of its scientific instruments powered down after Saturn, it was left with only tools to study its surroundings. However, it still had one more historic moment ahead. On February 14, 1990, from an astonishing 3.72 billion miles away, Voyager 1 took one final photograph. Earth as a tiny, pale blue dot, just 0.12 pixels in size. This image became one of the most famous in human history, marking the last time Voyager 1's cameras would ever operate. Then, the probes entered a long, quiet phase that lasted over 15 years, until something extraordinary happened. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 recorded a dramatic drop in solar particles and a surge in cosmic radiation, signaling that it had officially crossed into interstellar space, the first human-made object to do so. Voyager 2, moving at a slower pace, followed suit in November 2018. And so, the twin explorers, launched together yet destined for separate paths, continue their lonely voyage into the unknown carrying with them the story of our solar system and a message for whatever may be waiting beyond the stars. The heliosphere, the vast bubble surrounding our solar system, extends approximately 11 billion miles from the sun. This protective shield is created by the solar wind, a continuous stream of charged particles emitted by the sun and terminates at the heliopause, the boundary where the influence of the solar wind ceases and interstellar space begins. The only spacecraft to have crossed this frontier and exited the solar system are the Voyagers. Their findings sparked widespread scientific curiosity and debate. Previously, it was assumed that the solar wind gradually dissipated as it moved away from the sun. However, data from the probes revealed that instead of fading, the solar wind encounters a sharp boundary. Beyond this point, its influence ends and interstellar space takes over. Rather than dispersing, the solar wind redirects upon reaching this threshold, delineating a physical barrier between the two realms. While the solar wind flows around the heliopause from within, interstellar plasma does the same from the outside. Observations also help determine the heliosphere's shape. On one side, it appears spherical, while on the other, it extends into a long tail. Surprisingly, this shape is not static. The boundary of the solar system fluctuates due to enormous waves that arise at unpredictable angles. These waves can span up to 10 astronomical units, approximately 930 million miles. Additionally, Voyager data revealed that the heliopause undergoes rapid shifts over short periods. This may explain the six-year gap between the crossings of Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. However, these dynamic movements of the heliopause contradict existing models and remain unexplained. Similarly, discrepancies exist in the temperature and density of the solar wind near the heliopause. One of the Voyager's most significant discoveries was that the interstellar magnetic field is two to three times stronger than previously estimated. This suggests that interstellar particles exert ten times more pressure on the heliosphere than expected. Such insights deepen our understanding of stellar interactions and apply to other stars under study, indicating that similar processes occur in other planetary systems. Throughout their journey, the Voyagers have continued transmitting data, offering valuable information about their status and location. However, in 2022, Voyager 1, then 14.6 billion miles from Earth, began sending unusual signals strings of zeros, or the number 377, baffling scientists. It was later identified as a malfunction in the spacecraft's attitude control system, likely caused by cosmic radiation. Engineers managed to resolve the issue by rerouting telemetry through an alternate onboard computer. Another major setback occurred when Voyager 1 fell silent on November 14, 2023, remaining unresponsive for five months due to corrupted code on one of its chips. To restore functionality, engineers had to relocate the affected code to another section of the onboard memory. The process began on April 18, 2024, requiring 22.5 hours for signals to reach the spacecraft and another 22.5 hours for a response. 
By April 20th, communication was successfully re-established, allowing scientists to confirm the probe's operational status. These malfunctions serve as reminders that the Voyager's missions are nearing their end. NASA anticipates their instruments will function until 2025, after which a gradual shutdown will commence. As they run out of power, likely around their 50th anniversary, communication will cease, concluding this extraordinary mission. Yet, their interstellar voyage will persist, though they will no longer be able to relay their discoveries. Voyager 1 is traveling at approximately 3.5 astronomical units per year. One astronomical unit equals the average distance between Earth and the Sun, about 93 million miles, 150 million kilometers. It is currently headed toward the Ophiuchus constellation and in 38,200 years will pass within 1.7 light years of a star in Ursa Minor known as AC plus 7938. Its counterpart, Voyager 2, is moving at 3.1 astronomical units per year and is expected to approach Ross 248, a star in the Andromeda constellation, within 40,000 years. Presently, Voyager 1 is roughly 15.5 billion miles from Earth, while Voyager 2 is 12.4 billion miles away. While the Voyagers have left the heliosphere, scientists argue that they have not completely exited the solar system. The Sun's gravitational influence extends much further, potentially reaching the Oort Cloud, a vast, hypothetical sphere believed to house comets. The Oort Cloud consists of two regions, a spherical outer shell and a disk-like inner region. Its outer boundary is estimated to be between 50,000 and 100,000 astronomical units from the Sun. If the Voyagers continue on their trajectories, Voyager 1 will take about 300 years to reach the inner Oort cloud and potentially 30,000 years to traverse it, marking the true end of its journey within our solar system. Should the Voyagers ever encounter extraterrestrial life, they carry a unique message prepared by scientists, a golden phonographic record inscribed with music, greetings in multiple languages, sounds of Earth, human voices, whale songs, brainwave recordings, and messages from global leaders. Whether or not they are ever discovered, the voyagers will drift endlessly through the cold, dark void of interstellar space. They stand as enduring symbols of humanity's quest for knowledge, a testament to our curiosity and ambition. Launched from Cape Canaveral in 1977, just a month apart, Voyager 2 departed first, but due to its trajectory, reached the solar system's edge six years after Voyager 1. One of their most intriguing findings is the unexpected increase in space density as one moves away from the Sun. While interstellar space is considered a near vacuum, it still contains matter. Within the solar system, the solar wind has an average proton and electron density of 3 to 10 particles per cubic centimeter, decreasing with distance from the Sun. The lowest density is found at the heliopause, where solar plasma slows to a halt. The density of interstellar space beyond this boundary was predicted to be 0.037 particles per cubic centimeter. However, Voyager 2's data, recorded at 119.7 astronomical units from the Sun, measured 0.039 particles per cubic centimeter, an anomaly that challenges current scientific models. The calculations were nearly spot on until something unexpected happened. At 24.2 astronomical units, or roughly 18.5 billion kilometers, the measured density was 0.12 particles per cubic centimeter. But why was the density increasing? We'll explore that soon. First, let's take a step back and examine a much larger cosmic structure beyond the heliosphere. Understanding this vast formation will help us grasp how we exist within not just one, but two interconnected bubbles. When we observe deep space images, the universe appears filled with glowing gas and interstellar dust. Yet in the 1970s and 1980s, astronomers noticed something odd. The space surrounding our sun didn't match this expectation. Instead of being immersed in a dense interstellar medium, the solar system seemed to float in an almost empty void. Recently, scientists at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, CFA, confirmed this idea. Using advanced computer simulations, they reconstructed a three-dimensional model 
of our cosmic surroundings. Their findings revealed that the Sun and Earth reside near the center of an enormous bubble spanning 1,000 light years in diameter, now known as the local bubble. This structure began forming around 14 million years ago, when roughly 15 supernovae exploded over millions of years. The immense pressure from these explosions pushed interstellar gas outward, creating a vast bubble with a dense outer shell. Amazingly, this bubble is still expanding. Initially, it expanded at a speed of 60 meters per second, but data from the European Space Agency's Gaia Space Observatory indicates that expansion continues today, though at a slower pace of about 4 miles per second. Along its outer shell, astronomers have identified seven regions of star formation, dense molecular clouds where new stars are born. In fact, star formation along the edges of superbubbles appears to be common suggesting that similar structures exist throughout the galaxy. This raises the possibility that other stars, potentially with their own planetary systems, might also reside within their own cosmic bubbles. The Voyager's computers can execute approximately 81,000 instructions per second. By comparison, a modern smartphone is around 712,000 times faster. Data transmission to Earth occurs at 160 bits per second, a speed so slow that downloading a 5 gigabytes movie at that rate would take roughly 8.5 years. Yet, one of the most remarkable aspects of the Voyagers is their golden phonograph records. These gold-plated copper discs contain 115 analog-encoded photographs, greetings in 55 languages, a 12-minute montage of Earth sounds, and 90 minutes of music. These were designed in case an extraterrestrial civilization ever finds one of the probes. Each spacecraft is powered by three plutonium dioxide radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, mounted on extended booms. They are also equipped with 11 scientific instruments, each capable of in-depth data collection, though explaining them all in detail would take hours. Instead, let's highlight some of their most exciting discoveries and images. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 travel at different speeds and along different paths. Voyager 1 moves faster, at approximately 61,500.7 km per hour, while Voyager 2 travels at 56,327.4 km per hour. Voyager 1 has captured breathtaking images of Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, Saturn, and Uranus. It also provided the first ever image of an active volcano beyond Earth, erupting on Jupiter's moon Io. However, its most famous photograph remains the pale blue dot, taken on February 14, 1990, from a distance of 6 billion kilometers. This image inspired Carl Sagan's book Pale Blue Dot, a vision of the human future in space. Voyager 1 entered interstellar space on August 25, 2012, followed by Voyager 2 on November 5, 2018. These probes have provided invaluable insights into cosmic radiation, galactic winds, and the solar system's interactions with the broader galaxy. One day, in the distant future, an advanced civilization may discover these spacecraft, power them up, and revive them for one final mission. Until then, we eagerly await new discoveries from these legendary explorers. Stay tuned for the latest updates on the Voyagers and all the wonders of our universe.